This is Jonathan Agroff with Pro Boxing Fans here in Telford ahead of Saturday's Misfits card, joined by Paul Bamber. I haven't seen you since uh, Dubai and everything that happened there. Uh, first of all, uh, tell us what you're doing here at this Misfits event. Jay Swingler obviously headlining. Um, I just came out here to support uh, one of my teammates, um, Dean. Uh, so Dean the Great. So we're out here to support him. We have the same manager. And then hopefully... Uh, maybe Saturday something gets announced that works in my favor. Okay, so big news ahead for you. Uh, first of all, let's get your reaction. Dean, Dean the Great, and Walid Shots just had a massive kickoff. Uh, what did you, what were you thinking when that happened? Did you think something would happen? Uh, yeah, I, th I thought we were all going to get into a fight. Uh, like, uh, definitely was a little too crazy. Uh, I don't think I'm not a big fan of putting hands on people, unless it's like in the ring. But uh, I'm glad it got sorted out. It's definitely hyping the build up for the fight, which is amazing. And then I'm just excited to see everybody fight. Just want to go back to Dubai. Obviously, uh, we did an interview at the start of fight week, and then by the time Sunday came around, you weren't fighting Tommy Fury. Uh, what's your reflections on that? I know you weren't happy with how things played out, and you did some interviews afterwards, but how do you reflect on it now? It's been a few months. Um, it still sucks. I lost a lot of money. I spent a lot of money, invested a lot of money in my camp and stuff like that. Uh, I guess the silver lining to that would be Misfits. Uh, Mams gave me a call. I got a multi-site, uh, multi-fight deal with Misfits now, so that's a good thing. And um, ultimately, I guess I think Global Titans is no more. So uh, I'm just looking forward to bigger and better things. And hopefully, whenever Tommy's done um, doing what he's doing, we, we get to go in the ring and get it on. Is there bad blood towards Tommy Fury after what happened or not? 100%. 100%. I think that at the end of the day, we're all responsible for our own teams. And um, due diligence is a real thing. That wasn't a, a real thing in Dubai at all. Integrity was like nowhere to be found from anybody. So I'd really like to beat his ass. Um, on top of that, I just seen how he fought Jake. Uh, Jake was sick, dropped him in the eighth round with a jab. That's a little crazy. Um, I still think I'd beat him. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it's a thing that happens. I know I get past my next few fights. I perform well. It could be in the talks. I'm planning on knocking out Anthony Taylor. So uh, I think that's what gets me back in with Tommy, doing something he couldn't. And um, that's really where I'm at. So obviously on, on uh, Sunday night in Saudi Arabia, like you said, Tommy Fury got off the canvas to win. Uh, what would have happened if you win there with Tommy on Sunday? Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, I'm not really sure. I know I would have won. I plan to outwork him. Um, statistically speaking on paper, I'm a bigger puncher. We both have our own awkward styles. We both have good jabs. I know I would have won. Um, whether it would be a knockout or a decision, I, I'm entirely certain I'd come out on top. After watching him get uh, played around with by Jake, like I'm, I'm, it just solidifies everything I already thought. Um, there's not too many people that disagree with me outside of like Tommy and Mo Molly Mays fans or whatever the hell. Um, yeah, I would have won, hands down. I, easy to outwork. He still gets frustrated. Getting dropped in the eighth round is a bit crazy to me. Um, it's a big thing for Jake, though, too, because that means his power carries over, so that's, that's awesome for him. But um, I think I would have put him to bed. I just want to uh, pick up on something that's been a headline in, in the last few days, which is uh, John Fury was demanding Jake Paul pay for the bet they shook hands on. And now, since then, uh, Jake's team posted a video in the locker room where uh, John basically said, we're not talking about this now and stuff. Have you followed it? And what, what do you make of what's going on? Um, so for me personally, because uh, since I had this experience myself, handshakes don't mean shit. Not, not from them, because they say a lot of stuff and they do it for the reactions of the fans and stuff like that and let's say Tommy lost I'm pretty sure it, it just wouldn't be the same type of energy um, there's contracts for stuff for a reason if they were that confident they would have signed it it was very straightforward there's only one little um, identification in there that would have stated all or nothing I guess you could say so I, I just don't believe it I don't believe they got lucky they're more confident now that's why if they if they were that confident, they would have signed a contract, right? That's my belief to it. So I think Jake, I don't think Jake should pay him at all. And uh, if they do rematch uh, again, what do you think will happen? Uh, with that, though, I do think Tommy takes it again. I'm pretty sure he stops him. Like I said, Jake has good power. I don't know if it was just because he was sick or whatever that he didn't, from what he says, he didn't do what he wanted to do. But um, like I've been saying up front, if we're just talking about the sport, 
I love Jake. I think Tommy's a douche. But if we're just talking purely sport, Tommy's the better overround boxer. He's got a way better jab that gave Jake problems early on. Um, he's got good footwork and angles, and um, he held his composure for the most part. I was wondering on Tommy, have you spoken to him since what happened? Um, not directly. We've had indirect, like, back and forth via, like, media and stuff like that. He told me I was a shit house trainer and I don't deserve money or something like that. He told Donna or something. Um, so not directly, but there's been some interest from a few people that were trying to get something put together, and we'll see what happens. Because um, last time I checked, Tommy said he had... I have no aspirations to be a YouTube boxer, so there's no reason he should be calling out a KSI or anyone like that. It should be finish your job with Jake, get your money, you're ranked, get back to professional boxing, let me welcome you home. Final question, and uh, it's good to hear that you've got some news coming on the weekend. Uh, so Anthony Taylor, I don't know if you saw his tweets where he was talking about Carl Froch and, uh, you know, saying all these various things to Carl Froch. Uh, did you see it, and what do you make of that? I did. I think Anthony Taylor is delusional. He's a shit boxer. He's a very good entertainer. Um, but the problem with influencer boxing is you have to be entertaining, and then you actually have to be able to fight. Um, he's shown a few times that he can't really fight. He's just like a brawler. Anybody with a good boxing IQ is going to be able to get him out of there. Cole Froch would absolutely kill him. That's a former world champion. I think he well, he lost to like Andre Ward and maybe like one other person. It's Anthony's just begging per usual. All right, well, Paul, uh, enjoy the rest of fight week and we look forward to your news on Saturday. Thank you so much. Appreciate you.